Hello to everyone in our audience, and especially to those of you in our virtual hub. Uh, and welcome to day four of Doc Edge 2022. I hope you're enjoying the festival so far. Uh, my name is Duncan Dykes, and we have here today in Q&A uh, Marcos Cabota, the director of Sonic Fantasy. Uh, Marcos, it's great to have you with us. Hey, it's great to be here with you. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, so how this is going to work is that I'll start us off with a couple of questions, uh, and then we'll put it to the audience in our virtual hub for some further questions. Uh, so if you're in our virtual hub, then uh, if you think of a question, type it into the chat. So uh, our first question, just to start things off. Um, Marcos, how did you first encounter Bruce's story? Oh, um, I've, I'm, I'm, I've been a music fan since a long time. I, I knew who he was and, and um, I read his books and I always wanted to do something about Bruce and I knew his story. So um, there was this guy called uh, Gareth that um, I met in a film festival and and he knew Bruce very, 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 um, uh, he was a close friend of Bruce and, and it was because of him. He, he eventually became producer of the film, uh, Gareth, but it was because of him I, I, I could have met Bruce and and I started creating the story, Sonic Fantasy. I, uh, it's something that I knew that I wanted to do for a long time. So it wasn't just not, not something new. It wasn't new. I, I knew I wanted to do it. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's fascinating that you had a kind of uh, pre-existing idea of him. You kind of got to meet your hero with this project. Oh, yeah. Thank, thanks to Gareth. Yeah, he's my hero. I'm a big, you know, big uh, music fan and, and, and I love all the albums he worked. I, I'm a music freak. So when I get an album, I like to read who's behind the album. And, and I always saw his names and the albums I like, Bruce Sudin. So I said, oh, I need to, I, I try, I need to meet this man. It was like a mission impossible, but thanks to Garrett that he knew him, um, you know, and I told him about the documentary I wanted to make and Bruce was on board and, and, and we did it. Yeah. And of course the, the kind of the tragedy uh, that kind of hangs over the film a little bit is that Bruce of course passed away in, in 2020. Um, are you able to speak to how much he was able to be involved with the film before he passed away? Did he get to see any, any early cuts of it? No, he. Nah, it's a very sad story. Um, he 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 was he was very excited about the movie, and he was very excited about his story being told. And um, I did show him some bits and pieces, and I talked to him. He called me, but he never saw like a rough cut or the final thing. Um, and it's it's very, it's very sad. But he did he did see, like maybe twenty minutes of the film and he loved what he saw. So um, I can imagine that he would have loved to see the whole piece. Mm, I imagine so as well. It's, it's a beautiful tribute to him. Um, one other thing is that the, the film uh, mixes mediums. You have uh, animation alongside live action to help dramatize certain moments. Can you speak to uh, your experience working with animation? Uh, was that something you'd had uh, a past with or? No, that was something that happened. Um, I was editing the movie. Um, it was not something I wanted from the beginning. I knew that I wanted to to um, do some fiction inside the documentary. When I mean fiction, I mean I wanted to show what what happened inside the mind of Bruce. But suddenly I thought it has to be, you know, Bruce sees colors. It has to be animation. So, uh, but that happened in, in the middle of the edition uh, of the movie. So um, I got in touch with an animator. He was a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine. And we started working on, on that part. So it's something in a documentary, you know, things change along the way. It's not like a, you know, fiction film that, you know, exactly what's going to happen, but not in a documentary. So um, it was something that just happened in the middle of the way. And, and I think it works. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to have done it. Sure. Well, I mean, I think part of what the animation does so well is it helps really uh, create the sense of magic in those that moment of inspiration that Bruce talks about in the film. Um, on that note, I mean, the, the the title Sonic Fantasy it comes from uh, things uh, the type of things that Bruce talks about in the film. Can you talk a little bit about how you landed on that as a title to sum up the whole thing? Yes, um, I. I... Bruce had published um, three books um, 
uh, that I've read. Uh, it was, there were very technical books about his work. And um, I, I barely could understand it because I'm not a, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm not a technician, but I, I was reading those books before I met Bruce. And um, in a random page, in a random book, in a random paragraph, th there was this word, these words, sonic fantasy. So I wrote them down and um, he explained it in the book. And I said, oh, this is this is incredible. This is this is the title of the movie. So um, I didn't talk to him about the title. But when we went to shoot his interview on the clapboard, Sonic Fantasy was written there. So he he saw it and he said, is the film going to be called Sonic Fantasy? And I said, yes, Bruce, it's I love it. And he says, um, I love it, too. That's the best name you could give to my film. So uh, I got his blessing and, um, and that's how it went. Oh, that's really wonderful. Um, so the film, it's a very emotional sort of tribute to Bruce. Are you able to speak at all about what, uh, what emotion and what ideas you most hoped uh, to leave with an audience after they watched the film? Oh, well, it's a different things. Um, first of all, there's, um, there's more people that we think when, when there's a work, not just a film, but an album, a film festival, there's a lot of people working and they all have different inputs and they're very important for the project. So um, sometimes between these people, there are geniuses and there's some, you know, um, hidden geniuses and, and this, and Bruce was one of them. Also the, the you know, the time, the pass of time and, and how, how you know he did this album like 40 years ago and 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 he still remembers vividly everything and i just want to um, i hope the audience has got a like a feel of nostalgia of respect and love for bruce and admiration and and there's something they could you know talk about the next time they listen to thriller or listen to a Michael Jackson album and say, do you know that, you know, that the guy who recorded this is called Bruce Sudin and, and he was a genius. And, and, and because of him, this album sounds like it sounds. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think there's a really beautiful idea there to, I guess, spotlighting the people that aren't, you know, the, the headliners aren't the people that usually make, uh, yeah. make the well, newspapers all, we, and magazines. Yeah. We, we all know Michael Jackson. We all know Quincy Jones. Um, and they were like, they were, they were in the spotlight of Thriller because they, they did the album. It's, it's fair enough. They, they were the creators, but there was a lot of people behind that project. And Bruce was like an important part of it. So I thought I, I had to tell this story. Hmm. Well, we'll go now to some questions from our audience. Uh, the first question we have is from Christian. Uh, are you still in touch with anyone from the film? With uh, even uh, if Bruce has any family, are you still in touch with them as well? Oh yeah, Bruce's family has a, a daughter and has a wife. I'm in touch with them. I'm in touch also with um, people from well, I, from I interviewed um, um, technicians because um, they were all incredible people. Everyone who was interviewed, they were incredible, and and they they I had a sense when I was interviewing them that they 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 wanted to talk. They they've never had the chance to speak about it. And, and yes, I'm, I'm basically with nearly all of them. I'm, I'm still in touch and, and, and they're watching the film for the first time these days. So they're, I'm getting their feedback. And, and so, yes, yes, um, I do. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, another question we have uh, from James. Are you planning on making films like this about other industry game changers? Yes, not not immediately. Um, um, I'm I'm working on another film, but it doesn't have to do with um, industry game changers. But yeah, I'm I'm always open, and and I've enjoyed making Sonic Fantasy, and I hope like two or three more years I'll I'll be working on another film uh, similar to this. I've got a couple of ideas. I've got a couple of names that I've met, and and I want to and I want to do something about it. Yeah. Well, fantastic. We can look forward to those. Yeah. Um, next question we have from our audience, uh, from uh, Aaron. What is your thought on modern day uh, producers? And um, what do you think, what do you think uh, mixers and producers these days can learn from Bruce? Oh, from Bruce, a, a lot. Um, 
but um, Bruce is, um, when I talk to a producer, a music producer or engineer, they all know Bruce. When I talk to, to people that they're not in the music industry, they, they don't know Bruce. Obviously, I, I didn't know Bruce until I started, you know, being a music freak. But um, but when you go to engineer school, that you know, Bruce is like a god there. So uh, what do they have to learn? Everything. And I hope they do because... Um, Bruce uh, changed the way we record. That he uses the he started using the studio as an instrument, and I hope I hope that uh, music producers um, study engineer, you know, uh, before even becoming producers. And if they study engin music engineer, they'll study Bruce. So that they, there's a lot of things we all need to learn from from his magic and and the way he recorded music. No, no one has recorded music as him, but no one. Uh, and it's not it's not me saying that it's like everybody that I speak, you know, every every big name on music industry, um, they say Bruce is the best. Yeah. No hands down. Hmm. Well, uh, next question we have uh, from Dan. Um, in making a film about music and sound, uh, who helped you make the sound on the film? Who helped you uh, with the whole mix? No, oh, that's a good question. I've got my 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 crew. That's this is my seventh film, and um um I use always the same crew. That I've got the sound, um the direct sound that comes to the recording of the movies, and then I've got my mixers. But it was a challenge. It was a challenge for them because uh, we've never had done a, a music a film about music and sound before. So I remember. Um, my my friend him the, the sound engineer who came to the you know for example to record bruce sudin he was like putting the microphone and to bruce and he was like super nervous because he's his idol and he doesn't want to you know get it wrong in front of bruce sudin and 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 the same happened with the other engineers who were like recording and he knew all of them and he was a big fan of them so he was i could see him like i could see him he was like sweating because he wanted to do the work perfectly, and when we when we mix the the film on the studio back home, um, well back home back on the studio, they you know they put all you know hundred and twenty percent effort because they didn't want to mess up in this particular film. It was it was a big challenge for them, but they you know they enjoyed they loved it. Mm. Well, we have another question. This is from Kay. Uh, what was the most challenging part of making the film? Um, and did you try to get right answers or guide certain answers from interview subjects or just let them speak to their memories? Oh, one of the biggest challenges is to get all these people that they worked on, not only Thriller, but they worked on other Michael Jackson albums. They, they, um, they are very busy people. They're still working. Um, they're still, you know, touring around the world. So getting their dates and, and, you know, like in a production way, it was, it was, it was very, very difficult. We, we had to fly a long times to, to the U S uh, the most difficult part was getting the, the, the Michael Jackson um, um, license of music that we never had because it was so difficult that we didn't, we didn't actually get it. So uh, that was like the biggest challenge and, and it didn't work. We didn't get a license from Sony and the MJ State. And uh, what was the second question? Um, In terms of, did you try to guide certain answers from them or no, no, were you no, no, just no, trying no, to no. let them? I, it was, I just had a conversations. I came, um, I think we had uh, like 30 interviews and I, I, w I had 58 hours of interviews on, on the first premiere cut. So, no, it was just conversation, and I had some questions, obviously, but I like to, you know, have conversations with them so it feels natural, and, and they made the documentary. It wasn't me. I, I just asked them some, you know, the same questions, but then we, we talked about everything. So uh, it was very easy. My work was very easy because they, they, you know, uh, you could hear, okay, this, is, this has to come on the film. This has to come on the film. I and mean, my job just was just to like do the puzzle, but you know, mm. there's no voiceover on the film. It's just them talking. So um, they did all the job. Mm. 
Well, we have uh, another question. This one is from James, uh, which is, when did you decide to work on this idea? I guess, more specifically, uh, was there like a, a trigger for um, deciding this is the next thing you wanted to work on? Yeah, uh, it's, it, it certainly happens. Um, you're basically director has two, three ideas at the same time on his head and, and suddenly one day, okay, this is the one you have to do. So um, I was I was in France. I'm actually in France right now, but I was in France and, and um, I met this man called Gareth and as I told you before, and he, he knew Bruce. So at, at that point I said, okay, he knows Bruce. He's going to help me to get to Bruce. And he, he I talked to him about the project. He's, he's on the film industry also, Gareth. So um, he became part of the project, also a very important part of the project. So um, I said, this is this is the time. And, and, you know, I've been a music fan and a Michael Jackson fan, of course, since I was uh, 10, 11, 12. And I knew who Bruce was because I read his name. I didn't know how was his face. There was no internet before. But I knew there was a guy called Bruce Houdin that was doing all the recordings. So this is basically an idea that I've, I've had, you know, for a long time. Mm. Uh, well, we have a question now from Dan. And by the way, the process. Uh, sorry. Uh, and by the way, has it been a very long process? It's been a three years project. Yeah. Oh, wow. Is that from uh, starting production officially um, through till now? Basically from, you know, get searching for the money for, to the film and, 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 and actually, you know, um, premiere the film at Dog Edge. Hmm. We're, we're very happy to have it. Um, oh. I had another question. Uh, so this film uh, examines these people's, the sort of the magic of these people's memories of this one specific period of time and making a work of art. I'm curious, as you are finished with the film now, what memory do you think from the making of it, what, what day or moment will stick with you for the longest? Uh, of the whole process? Yeah. Of making the film? Well, the day, the first day I met Bruce. Because hmm. he, he, we went to his home um, in Florida. He had a big home there and he had all his recordings um, not just Michael Jackson, uh, Frank Sinatra, you know, you name it, Barbara Streisand, and, and he had his studio. And I will never forget one day, <clears throat> I was with Bruce in his own studio, and Bruce sat me and said, he said, come here, Marcus, and he sat me in a chair on a, the perfect spot on the studio. And he said, okay, listen to this. And he played for me the original tape of Billie Jean. The original mix of Billy Jean in the same spot that Bruce had mixed it like years before. So um, the way it sounded was incredible. Uh, I was like, I haven't mm. heard that. I, I even asked him, Bruce, is that another version we've never heard before? And he said, no, no, this is the, the version, the, the final mix. But you're listening the way I listened to it like 40 years ago. So it was amazing. And as a as a music fanatic, that must have been just incredible. Um, wow! No, no, imagine I was one of a kind of experience. Blown away, blow, blown, totally blown away. It was uh, the, from the whole process, from the whole you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs, like every film, but that was like my you know the best moment. Um, I was I was in tears. I was in tears. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have time for one more question from the audience. Uh, from James, are there any new ideas or techniques you want to explore in the future? And I guess, is there anything you learned from this film that you're going to take forward? Oh, uh, techniques, but uh, music techniques or film techniques? Um, um, either. Either. Okay. So, um, sure. Um, you know, <clears throat> in this film, I've met incredible people that they're they're geniuses and they all have their own techniques and, and their own ways of making uh, music. And, and for example, um, next month um, I'm traveling to Germany. I'm meeting one of the people you've seen on the film because I will probably, you know, explore the idea of making a documentary about his life because he also has a story to tell. And he told me about that story and, and, 
and the way he recorded music and 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 yeah i could explore i'm gonna explore this this option and about the film my techniques i i love making documentaries um i've done documentaries before and and i like to mix you know um I, I, the idea of mixing um, animation with, you know, the real thing, it's been it's been very satisfying for me, and I'll uh, I'll I'll sure will repeat the 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 idea with my crew because it worked. So if it's possible, I'll, I'll do it again. And hmm. I'm I'm I always well, exploring. I'm always exploring new techniques and new ways of creating films and documentaries, and it's you know the possibilities are you know. You know, mm. and yeah. Um, well, I believe that's all the questions we have time for. Um, I just want to say uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, if you haven't had a chance to see the film yet, uh, it's available in our virtual cinema uh, until the uh, 10th of July, and it's it's fantastic, it's really worth checking out. Um, for those of you who are in our virtual hub right now, the exhibits will stay open for another hour. So we've got some really cool XR kind of stuff in there that's really worth checking out as well. Um, otherwise, uh, Marcos, thank you again so much for joining us. It's been great having the film in the festival. Thank you very much, Doc Edge. Um, I love your festival. Um, I knew the festival um, way before I started making this film and I'm a huge fan. So thank you very much for you know letting, letting me and my film be part of the festival. And we look forward to having you here in person someday. Oh, I hope so. Hope so. I've never been there to New Zealand, and I'm, I'm you know um, it's my top one destination in my list. Mm. All right. Well, and that goes to everyone in the audience. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, um, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.